we will start with some introductions. So I am Tessa Leveroni, Policy Advisor with the Performance Management Reporting and Observation Team here at the Mayor's Office of Operations. Um, that is a long name because it encompasses a lot of different work that the Office of Operations does. Uh, specifically, I am part of the team that produces the Mayor's Management Report. I'm also the Open Data Coordinator for the Office of Operations. So I'm working to add more data sets uh, revise a lot of our data sets and make uh, the data that we have more accessible to you. I will hand it to my colleague Renata. Hi, my name is Renata Garica. I'm a policy advisor. I'm actually on the data management and analytics team. So helping the mayor's office of operations to ad hoc data analysis wherever the need may be. Um, I used to work in market research doing data and analytics and uh, very do lots of work with the MMR data and other data sets uh, available through the uh, mayor's office and oper of operations and from other agencies and groups. Um, so the mayor's office of operations, like what do we do? Um, we're, we're here to help make uh, New York City government more effective and efficient. Um, so we often are managing um, multi-agency programs, helping coordinate work that happens across lots of different agencies and mayor's offices um, to, to stand up new initiatives, to, to keep work on track on existing initiatives. And, and in particular, Tessa and I are interested in how we can use data to help the city make more informed policy decisions and, and strategic investments. Um, what are some of the data sets that uh, live at the Mayor's Office of Operations, but also on open data? Um, we have uh, 9 to 911 end to end data. So we do have a team that is responsible for doing quality assurance on 911 data um, and, and, and looking at first response agencies like PD, uh, FDNY, and EMS um, and looking at end to end response times. Um, we have scorecard ratings, which is something that I actually work with a great deal, which uh, monitor is a, a an independent program that uh, looks at street and sidewalk cleanliness um, throughout New York City. Um, we have capital projects data that uh, tracks the progress of all major infrastructure and IT projects that have a budget of $25 million or more, um, all the projects that are currently active. Um, and then finally, our talk today is about the mayor's management report, which is looking at uh, agency indicators of performance, which, uh, as you'll see in this presentation, has a wide variety of uh, meanings, can uh, refer to lots of different uh, kinds of uh, measurements, uh, uh, but we're really excited to talk about them. Yeah, <laughs> go on. <laughs> Um, so today we'll be talking at first, uh, Tessa will introduce you to some MMR basics, what is included in the MMR, and then also talk about um, the various data products that the Mayor's Office of Operations um, maintains um, so that you can access data about the MMR. Um, I'll be going through a case study of how we've used uh, MMR data for analysis um, and what's next, uh, what is coming for the MMR for the public. Great. All right. So like I said, there's a, a wide variety of folks on the session today, including some people that work with us on uh, producing MMR data. But even so, even if you're involved with the production of the MMR, uh, sometimes the history and the impact and the origins of the report get lost. So we wanted to make sure we all had kind of the same shared vocabulary and understanding about what the mayor's management report is before we start talking about how it's evolved uh, and how we use the data internally. So the origin story of the Office of Operations and the Mayor's Management Report is really in the fiscal crisis of the 1970s in New York City. So at that time, the city had implemented massive layoffs uh, and budget cuts for city operations, uh, but there was a commitment at that time, the city pledged to kind of move away from managing by crisis into a more data informed and proactive performance management approach. So in the late 1970s and 1977, the Office of Operations was launched to plan, coordinate, uh, monitor the operations of city agencies, and eventually evaluate city agency performance. So the mayor's management report was one tool to act on that promise. So the report is intended to hold city agencies accountable to stated performance goals. Um, and at the time, it was really an act of radical transparency um, and accountability before that was kind of part of what we expect from 
uh, government agencies or what we're working towards from government agencies. And it was really necessary to try and build back trust in the competency of government at a time when, you know, most folks were not really uh, too keen on, on what was happening um, in the city at that time. So this report is mandated by the city charter. Uh, and since 1977, it has been published every year, twice a year. So there are two different reports that we'll be referring to. Uh, we are a city agency, so of course there's an acronym. Um, the PMMR, which you see here, that is the Preliminary Mayor's Management Report. And that encompasses the first four months of the fiscal year. So just as a reminder, whenever you're looking at uh, data or reports that are coming from uh, some kind of government agency, just be uh, aware of if it's federal, state, municipal, local, because we all use different dates, uh, which is a headache, but just how it is, I suppose. Um, and so New York City's fiscal year is from July 1st through June 30th. So the preliminary mayor's management report encapsulates the first four months, so July 1st through October 31st, and it's published two weeks after the city's January financial plan. So if the financial plan is released late, we also release our report uh, an equivalent amount of time after the budget. The MMR, or the Mayor's Management Report, is the full fiscal year report. So again, July 1st through June 30th, and we publish that report by September 17th each year. September 17th is in the charter mandate, so you can always expect this report at that time. It's not a moving target. And um, the tradition of performance management has kind of expanded and contracted over the years, but still the mayor's management report remains kind of the gold standard in this type of reporting uh, because of its scope, consistency, and its content. And to our knowledge, it's the only uh, report of its kind because not only are we asking for agencies to report performance data, but we're asking them to explain the performance data as well. So I'll talk in a minute about what's actually in the report and why it's so unique. So as you can imagine, just based on the, the folks on this call today, there's a real wide variety um, of audiences that look at the report. So we have the general public, of course, press, good government groups, advocacy groups, uh, university students. Internally, the Office of Operations uses this data, uh, which we'll talk about in greater detail later in this session, deputy mayor teams, and the agencies themselves. And the agencies are signing off on the content of this report each production cycle. They aren't, this isn't kind of a, a big brother gotcha moment, as we like to say, uh, we're working collaborative, collaboratively with them to publish this data and describe what's going on. But there's one uh, stakeholder that I wanted to highlight in particular, and that's the city council. Uh, and we're giving this session at exactly the time in which city council is using the preliminary mayor's management report as a primary source in their oversight and budget functions. So if you think about that reporting cycle that I described earlier, with the preliminary report giving kind of a temperature check of how city agencies are doing in the first four months of the year, uh, allowing them to course correct and, and work on performance before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, it's coming out right after the January budget. And so the January financial plan is the preliminary budget proposal for the following fiscal year. Uh, and so when city council is reviewing that budget proposal prior to approving the budget, they're looking at the PMMR as one source to understand how agencies are doing. So it's an opportunity to kind of take what the agencies are saying, trends in their performance, what challenges they're facing, what success they're having, and some data about their performance and to match that with what's being proposed for their budget appropriations for the following year. And so you'll see on the city council's calendar in the next month or so, all of these preliminary budget hearings where they're talking about what the agencies are intending to do with their budgets. And the PMMR is in a very large part of that conversation. So uh, if you choose to check out those hearings, or maybe now you will, since you heard about it here, uh, just keep an ear out for some of the references to the preliminary mayor's management report. Okay, so this report's about 500 pages. What the heck is in it? Uh, well, there are 45 agency chapters. We have a handful of collaboration chapters, which reflect on high priority initiatives and uh, 
over 1800 probably at this point uh, performance indicators. Um, each agency chapter is organized in the same way. So they're organized by services, goals, and indicators. And services are what the agency does, what you know each agency uh, through their mandate or other responsibilities um, does for the city. Goals are what the agency hopes to achieve related to those services. And indicators measure the progress towards achieving those goals. So as I mentioned before, each of these data tables organized by service goal and indicator is accompanied by narrative. So this example here uh, was good for a slide because the narrative is a little bit short, um, but you'll see um, various level of detail for these sections throughout the book, as we call it. Um, we also ask agencies to reflect on how their promoting fair delivery of services in something called the focus on equity section. Uh, so that is also included in each of the agency chapters. And again, this is unique. You may see, you know, government reports that just focus on the data or maybe have a dashboard of uh, showing how agency performance is trending. Um, but the reason why this is 500 pages is because we are also asking why. And in that way, for agencies, it's one of the only places that they really can tell the story in a, in a concise way. So as you're reading through, you're, you're seeing the data point, you don't have to guess necessarily about why something is trending positively or negatively. Uh, the agency has put the time in and the effort in to provide that information for you. Here's just a, a selection of performance indicators. There's a real wide variety of indicators in the in the report. Um, so I just chose a couple here that kind of represent various city services that you might be familiar with. Um, so we have, you know, more administrative type indicators, uh, operational progress indicators, um, and and some other programs that that you might be familiar with from being in New York City. Um, so again, you know, if you have a an agency in mind that you're interested in the work or uh, a particular project that you're working on, um, you can really find some useful information that might help uh, contextualize your project. Um, something else that I'll mention about the report itself is that our goal is to look at trends. And so uh, many of these indicators are not uh, tied to a specific quick initiative or, you know, um, if an agency receives a, a, a funding source for one year and they do this special program, we're looking for the longer term trends. So we try to loop in that performance measurement from that quick initiative into kind of larger, what is the service that that initiative is providing? And so you may not see sort of those uh, very public initiative names around, but you often do see that in the narrative section where they're they're speaking specifically about how they um, worked on this goal through a specific program. There's many much more data too in this uh, book than just the performance indicators. That would be a whole nother session. Um, but just here are a few of the appendices that we include in the reporting as well. So you can see from various agencies, including the Office of Management and Budget, the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, our auditing teams, they also provide data about city agencies that we include uh, as additional data tables uh, in the report. Most of this information is separate from the particular agency chapters where the performance indicators live, but they uh, provide insight into kind of the citywide um, agency performance um, uh, for each of these agencies. So I definitely hey, would. Yes, go ahead. We got a good question in the chat, which is somebody's really interested in how we choose the indicators yeah. uh, with agencies and how often they're reviewed. Great question, and I'll speak a little bit about this later. But oh, okay, um, sorry. No, no, no. I, just as part of our next steps, but um, but briefly. So this is a collaborative effort with the agencies. We do have a few MMR liaisons uh, in the chat, and so you know, feel free, guys, if you disagree with what I'm saying, to chime in. But um, or agree, I guess. Um, but so we uh, at operations, each of us on the team have a portfolio of agencies that we work with, um, and again there are some indicators that are kind of tried and true core function of the agencies that don't change very much over time. But we absolutely do encourage um, agencies to suggest 
new performance indicators. Um, we also do that internally as well, as we pay attention to um, new initiatives, new strategic goals, uh, new commitments, especially as an administration change changes. Uh, you'll see from leadership kind of a new vision that comes with commitments that we want to track. Um, so each production cycle, we work with agencies to add indicators um, as we see uh, is necessary for that chapter. Um, but also, uh, and this is the, speak, uh, the part that I'll mention again later on, uh, in I think April of 2021, um, Executive Order 13 um, mandated kind of the review of the MMR um, as um, kind of a, a full holistic look at all of the indicators and all of the chapters hadn't been done in a very long time. So on a case by case basis, if an agency wanted to update something, we were able to do that. Um, but this new executive order is um, kind of the impetus to do that deep dive look for all of the agencies again. So we're, we've already completed one group of agencies in that review process. We're just kicking off our second group of agencies in that review process. Um, so you can definitely expect some changes uh, in the next few cycles, new performance indicators, new services and goals. I can't actually see the chat. So if there's any follow up to that, please just shout it out. <laughs> okay. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So how can you get all this stuff? You know, we have 2000 performance indicators. We're talking about all this data that we collect, all this monitoring that we're doing of the agencies, but how can you actually use this information? Well, this started as a, a act of radical transparency and, you know, that has been fulfilled and not fulfilled over the years. And mostly what I'll be talking about um, kind of fulfilling that promise. What I mean by that is the, the products and the accessibility of this data for users in the public agencies or other advocacy groups. So it started as a, a printable version. Uh, here in the office, we actually have the full archive, which is really cool to see um, printed versions from the 1970s. But online, we do have a digital archive of printable PDFs from 1997 to the present. So we still uh, do produce this book, as we call it, the printable version of the report. Uh, you can just see a snapshot here of one of the services for the Department of Transportation. Um, and so, you know, the data is kind of locked up into these data tables. But as I mentioned, what's positive about these PDFs is that you see the data and you can read about it right next to each other, which is really helpful when you're trying to understand trends in the data. I would encourage you to take a look at that archive, especially if you're from a city agency or work on the MMR, um, going back into the past of what your agency used to report on over the years is really interesting. Um, I worked at the Parks Department for many years. I see a few parkies um, on the call here. And one of my favorite was about um, the Parks Department used to report on abandoned vehicles in parks being removed you know, from natural areas and, and other sections of parks which we don't report on anymore, thankfully, because it isn't as much of a problem, I hope. Um, so we evolved from there. We realized, okay, printable version, you know, it's required as part of this reporting. Um, yes, it's helpful to see everything in one place, but we can do better. So there are a few web products that evolved from there including the citywide performance reporting website that you see on the left. Um, this uh, version, and there'll be links um, at the end of the presentation, which we can also send around. Um, this website only has critical indicators, um, but it does have a retrospective look, so you can toggle and look through the history of this particular indicator. We also have the citywide performance mapping site, uh, so some indicators are disaggregated by geography, and this is where they're shown. Again, you know, it's this is, I think, a, a step in the right direction in terms of a visual reference for the history of these indicators or the spatial aspect of these indicators. But it's not so easy to pull a whole bunch of data and do your own analysis or look at trends for particular years. Uh, it's uh, still sort of wrapped up in the format of this report. So we evolved again with the launch of the Open Data Project. Um, 
we had we did post MMR uh, performance indicators and some other data sets um, onto the open data portal, but uh, they are static tables that we had to do one for each cycle, production cycle. So you can see here just a list of for every MMR and every PMMR, we would post a new table. Um, did it make it easier to pull the whole indicator data set at once and do some analysis? Yes, absolutely, a step in the right direction. But these tables are static. So if an agency changes um, a reported data value, which they can do, uh, that wouldn't be reflected here until you got to the next reporting cycle. It also just reflects what is published in the book. And we actually collect more data than is published in the book. So for the June full, um, sorry, for the full mayor's management report, which goes through the end of the fiscal year, those values that are published are the year to date total, one value for each indicator for that fiscal year. For the PMMR, it's the October year to date total. So that one value encompassing the first four months of the fiscal year. But many indicators are reported more frequently than that. And so we actually have periodic values that aren't reflected here in the, the first iteration of our open data. So we kept evolving. We're keeping, we're keep moving. The trains keep rolling. Um, and so just in the spring of 2021, uh, we launched the dynamic mayor's management report. And this was uh, an answer to a lot of the things I just described. So how can you pull more than one you know, year of data at once? How can you look at indicator attribute information alongside of the data? Um, and so this site, uh, we hope, allows users to more easily find the data that they need and allows uh, more granular analysis without even the need to really code or do, you know, fancy um, data work. Um, so I just wanted to walk you through that site just so that you know about this product and one of the ways that you can access this data. So I'm going to toggle over. Um, okay. Can you still see my screen? I've lost you all. You're good. You're okay, good. great. Thank you, Renata. Um, all right. So here is the dynamic mayor's management report. And I won't walk through every single section of the site, um, but you, it kind of is formatted like the, the printable version of the report. So you can see up here, there's a few different tabs that you can navigate around. Um, city services is one way that we bucket agencies that perform a similar function. Um, so you can think of, you know, health and human services agencies. If you go into city services, you'll see those buckets and you can find, you know, agencies that are kind of related to each other. Uh, the initiative section, this shows those collaboration chapters that I mentioned before. So these are uh, typically aligned with administration priorities. And so you can see here the uh, blueprints that the Adams administration has released over the past uh, year or so. We've converted into collaboration chapters so we can monitor the commitments and the goals of those initiatives. But the part I want to show you in detail is this agency section. So again, here are those city services buckets. That's how they're organized. You can also toggle alphabetically uh, and find um, the agency that you are most interested in. So I am actually going to go to the Department of Transportation because we are going to look at Staten Island Ferry Ridership. So here for the Department of Transportation, um, the narrative sections from the most recent publication are included in these tabs here. So this is from the FY23 PMMR, which was just released at the end of January. So you can scroll through here and see the, the narrative content provided by the agency. And then down below, you see the data tables. And they're organized in much the same way uh, as the published report but you can actually click into these indicators and see some extra information. Um, one thing about this site, you might be saying, what are all these NAs? What does that mean? Well, uh, it's important to keep in mind that not all of the indicators are reported to us at the same frequency. So we have some indicators that we get one uh, value per year. It's an annual indicator. We have other indicators that we get 
a data value per month, and that's a monthly reporting frequency. And we have reporting frequencies in between those two extremes. Um, so an NA likely in this case indicates that we uh, either don't expect data from that month, um, or uh, for some reason the agency couldn't report it. And that's where this narrative piece becomes very important because there's usually some kind of justification if something uh, that should have been reported was not reported. But I'm going to scroll down until I find Staten Island Ferry ridership. So here's our indicator. If you click into there, you get a quick snapshot of the full fiscal year values for that particular indicator. You can download a CSV from this point or you can continue to drill down into more detail. So here's the full indicator data. It's kind of the profile page for each of the indicators. Um, here you'll see the definition of the indicator, its reporting frequency, uh, the last time it was updated and some other information as well. You can download from here uh, as well. And then you can slice and dice the data in a few different ways. Um, so since we haven't reach the end of the full fiscal year, I'm actually just going to toggle off 2023. Um, and so you can see here, I just clicked on 2018. So you can pick the years that you might be interested in. Uh, you may be interested in seeing, um, you know, those months, um, the data value by month, and then the, the years that you're looking at kind of next to each other to see how performance has, has fluctuated uh, in that way. You can select a month. Um, here, as it's loading, great, great. <laughs> a little slow today. A little slow today. It's true. Um, there or you it goes. Can go to the month tab. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> again, you can look at it by month. Uh, you can just look at one year if you wish. Um, so it's really dynamic, as it it says in the name. Um, you can really yeah. take a very quick look at indicators that you're interested in and get a very um, uh, easy visual sense of how the indicator might be trending. Um, you can also look at it as a data table here. And then this tab is that mapping function that I mentioned earlier. Not all indicators are disaggregated by geography, but those that are will include this mapping tab and it will show for each police precinct, school district, community district, um, what the the value is instead of just the citywide total you can download this and so definitely as you're using any iteration of mmr data i would recommend using the dmmr as a tool because it has this attribute information really easily accessible and that's very important for just understanding what you're looking at it's kind of a built-in data dictionary one other last function that i want to um, share with you very quickly is this compare indicators function. And so this is trying to, you know, provide the opportunity to create a story in the data, um, again, in a very quick and easy accessible way. So I'm just going to compare two indicators and see, see what happens. So I'm going to look at, just doing a keyword search, I'm going to look at city bike trips. You see it pop up here. I'm going to turn off 2023 again. Um, City bike trips here in the purple. And I want to compare that to Staten Island ferry ridership. And there it is in the orange. So this sort of basic uh, comparison actually does tell a kind of interesting story. So you can see prior to the pandemic in 2020, um, you know, city bike trips and Staten Island ferry ridership were relatively constant. Um, Staten Island ferry ridership had more users than city bike trips. But after FY20, that relationship changed. So Staten Island ferry, ship ride, uh, Staten Island ferry ridership really decreased. Uh, in FY21, as you might expect, less commuting, uh, people weren't using public transportation as much, but there was a great increase in city bike trips. So instead of using public transportation um, or commuting to the office, perhaps folks were making more local trips on a city bike or choosing to bike so that they didn't have to be uh, in the enclosed environment of public transportation. 
So definitely use this tool. Of course, you know, these indicators have all different scales and units. So, so uh, you just have to keep that in mind as you're doing your comparison. But again, it's just kind of a, a low code way, I guess, of, of doing some easy comparisons. Um, and you kind of have a nice built-in visual. Okay. Let me go back here. All right. Great. But we didn't stop there. We're not done. Uh, and this is where we are, are meeting present day now with Open Data 2.0. So just last month, um, you know, we're now releasing all this extra periodic data on the DMMR. We have a historical look. Um, so we need to bring our open data to meet that product. And so just last month, we released a new tabular uh, performance indicators data set. So this is all of the performance indicators, all of the periodic values. Uh, this first release is from 2016 to the present. Um, and it's a one-stop shop where you can download um, all of this performance data and do your own analysis. Um, this data set will be updated monthly. And there's a few caveats that I'll mention in a minute. Um, but it takes those static tables, one per cycle that our, our staff had to publish that we had to maintain and combines all of that into one um, actively updated data set that you can use um, in your own work. So things to keep in mind when you're using MMR data. Um, first, the open data team, <laughs> I'm sure will appreciate this, but also keep in mind for all of the open data sets that you're working with, please read the data dictionary. Um, there is a lot of uh, tips and nuances that are described um, in that data dictionary, and it just helps you get a, a fuller understanding of what it is that you're looking at. Um, as I mentioned, we will be updating the new open data set monthly. However, we do have a few periods where we pause. So we still are obligated to publish a report. And so we don't want to publish that data prior to the publication of the report itself. So uh, I think in August and December, around that time, you can expect this data um, to not have an update until the release of the actual report. After that time, it will all be brought up to current. Um, but we just don't want to uh, give spoilers, I suppose, before the report is published. Definitely continue to use the DMMR or the PDF report as you're working with this data. Again, it has that really important narrative context to what you're seeing in the data trends. And then try, do your best, you know, to understand the indicators that you're looking at. So look at the indicator definitions, understand the update frequency, and keep in mind that there could be NAs or missing data. And typically NAs are because we don't expect a data value at that time. If it's an annual indicator, we don't expect a monthly value for March, for example. But it also could mean that for some reason there was a disruption in reporting of that data. And those um, justifications, descriptions of why something was missing, is most likely to be contained in the narrative piece of the report. So I would recommend using them in tandem. This is not um, something to replace the, uh, the uh, full report format. So use them together. I will pause there for any additional questions before we move on to the case study. Okay, take it away, Renata. Thanks so much, Tessa, for all that history. I when when I first heard this uh, our practice presentation, I actually learned a lot about the MMR that I didn't know, which I really appreciated. So um, we can go on to the the next slide, Tessa. Um, so, so when I first started at the mayor's office about a year ago, um, just over a year ago, uh, we were about to uh, publish the PMMR, and we knew that a lot of city services had been drastically impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this was, I believe, due to be the second... Was it the first or the second PMMR? I don't remember if it was the first or the second PMMR after the pandemic, but I believe it was the second. Um, and, and as a reminder, the preliminary mayor's management report is tracking indicators from July to October. And so it actually, those, indi th those indicators in particular 
um, were helpful at looking at pandemic impact because they represented very distinct phases of the pandemic. So in, in 2019, um, that period of time had no pandemic impact. In 2020, um, although it was actually fiscal year 2021, um, July to October was uh, really a sort of peak pandemic time. Um, and then uh, in 20 uh, fiscal year 2022, but actual calendar year 2021, July to October was after vaccinations and sort of right before Omicron had hit. Um, so, so that time period was actually very helpful for us to be able to isolate um, the impact of the pandemic in agency indicators. Um, so the question that uh, people came to me with was, how could we go about creating a pre-pandemic pre baseline for PMMR indicators or for MMR indicators writ large um, if we wanted to sort of understand where we thought that indicators would be without if the pandemic hadn't happened, quote unquote. Um, other statisticians in the audience, I'm sure, will know that's an incredibly hard question to answer with any certainty. So, so we accepted that our statistical methods are all a little approximate, but we we more wanted to be able to to just understand general trends, um, and then also to get a sense of understanding what um, which of the indicators are still being impacted by the COVID nineteen pandemic, and which ones really haven't returned to what we would expect that baseline to be. Um, so on this slide, you can see what our, our methodology ended up being. Um, we took the five years of pre-pandemic data um, to create a baseline using a linear model technique. Um, so that data ranged from um, July to October of 2015 to July uh, through October of 2019, fiscal years 2016 to 2020, um, to calculate basically an expected trajectory. Um, at first, it was suggested that we would use a five-year average, but a lot of these indicators actually do see a lot of progress year over year. The either be increasing or decreasing based on, you know, what the agency's goals are. Um, and so a, a linear model was really a better fit because it, it allowed us to capture that trajectory, that progress over time. Um, in order for us to define a sort of baseline, quote unquote, we called it the status quo. Um, it was defined by uh, one standard deviation above or below um, that linear model's prediction um, to establish what we think would have happened, quote unquote, without a pandemic, uh, also known as a, a, a counterfactual. Um, I will say to other statisticians in the room that one standard deviation above and below is actually a, a pretty... Uh, tight confidence interval to be using in this situation, um, but we felt that it was most easily understandable to the less statistically uh, uh, not minded uh, in the room. And so so that was what we went with. Um, and then so so the rest of the taxonomy here that we were looking at um, was uh, were, were indicators falling within this status quo range. Um, and then a lot of indicators do have a desired direction. We would like to see them increasing or decreasing. So we could use that information to calculate whether an, an indicator was, if, if it's outside of the anticipated range, is it quote unquote tanking or thriving? Is it uh, doing really poorly compared to where we would like it to be? Or is it doing really well? Um, but a lot of indicators actually have no desired direction. We don't have a particular way that we would like to see that indicator performing. And so we would just call those in indicators impacted if they were outside of the expected range. Um, and so this allowed us to do actually quite a few different um, kinds of analyses once we had these taxonomies. Um, and, and most importantly, honestly, it helped us look at the macro picture of the city. So we could see out of, I, I think it's like 1,100 indicators out of the maybe 2,000 that are in the book um, that have um, that have sufficient historic data for us to run a linear analysis. Um, we found for, for the most recent PMMR, so that's uh, data from July to October of 2022, um, that 36% of our indicators are performing where we would expect them to be uh, based on their pre-pandemic baseline, and 13% are actually performing better than expected if they if they have that desired direction included. 
Um, that does mean that 50% of our indicators have not returned to their pre-pandemic baseline. Um, sometimes they have gotten a lot closer. Sometimes they, I think about half of them have, have actually made a lot of progress. And, and the, the impact of the pandemic has just been so broad that, that it's, it's going to take some time for them to get back to where they were. Um, I will say that we will be actually internally retiring this analysis at the end of the year, five years of data to make a prediction for uh, what would happen four years out is a little bit bold. Um, so, so this is uh, sort of the last round of data that we'll be using this analysis on, but it's been really helpful for us to get that big picture of how the city's doing, how agencies are doing and the city as a whole um, with regard to MMR indicators. Um, sorry, and then on the right, uh, it also helps us look at micro trends. So when um, Tessa and the rest of the uh, team uh, are looking at and and helping agencies write their chapter narratives. Um, I frequently get questions about, okay, we the, the way the MMR is set up is that it's often just looking at numbers year over year. Um, it's not looking at the five-year historical trajectory or comparing to pre-pandemic. So I often have people coming to me saying, oh, well, this has improved or this has gone down year over year, but can you give me this historical trend to sort of make more sense of what we're seeing? Um, and one thing I was able to do was produce a bunch of what we call sparkline graphs, small graphs, um, that that can show you the the historical trajectory um, of each indicator in the book. Um, so the two we have here, as we were talking about earlier, city bike trips, you can see a pretty steady increase pre-pandemic um, that, that was happening. And in the first year that was impacted by the pandemic, this fiscal year 2021, there is a, a, a lower increase than we usually see. But then in 2022 and 2023, a huge increase beyond actually what we would have anticipated based on the pre-pandemic trending. And then below, Staten Island Ferry Riders which honestly is my favorite indicator, um, had a, a solid trend downward here, although I will say in the MMR, it's a steady trend upward. So a lot of indicators do have seasonal impacts. Um, so just so you know, fun fact, um, but, but a really huge decrease um, in the first year of the pandemic for Staten Island Ferry ridership, and then a very strong, I would say, increase in ridership since that just still has not quite reached um, what our pre-pandemic baseline was. Um, so you can go to the next slide. And so one of the other things that this allows us to do is to sort of aggregate up by agency. And I, I don't want to call anyone out here, but it, I will say that it does. And we don't do this to say um, agencies are, aren't performing well. We're really interested in looking at, OK, which agencies have been hit the hardest by this pandemic and, and might need more resources to help them get back on track towards recovery. Um, so we can look within each agency and see of the indicators that they're reporting how many of them are at status quo, what percent are thriving and tanking and impacted. Um, so this chart is, is sort of sorted by uh, what percent are, are status quo. Um, but you can see, even though um, this agency M is relatively low on the status quo, they have a lot of indicators that are really thriving. Um, and and so this, uh, this information is really helpful for us to, to help um, both build narrative and also um, advocate for city agencies to get more more resources to help them, um, you know, uh, support the city. Um, so yeah, any questions about this analysis? Happy to take them. We'll have more time for questions too at the end. If anything comes to mind, feel free to put put it in the chat as well. Chat that maybe I would uh, call out, um, including um, one from Jennifer McDonald at DSNY. Um, who asks, although you are retiring the analysis, will you be modifying any indicators as a result of non-recovery to pre-pandemic baseline? I don't think that we would be modifying indicators at all. I, our goal is not, and Tessa, I think, can speak more about this, is, is not um, to, to penalize or paint a bright and rosy picture about the city or to paint a really dark one. We're really focused on, and and I think, like, 
one of the things that makes MMR data so useful is that um, it does track the same numbers over a long period of time. So if you're constantly changing what your indicators are and what they're measuring, you end up with less historical data, which would prohibit us from doing like long-term analyses like these. I think it's totally natural that something is huge and, and life-changing and globally impactful as a, a global pandemic um, would have really lasting effects on city indicators, but I don't think that's um, motivation. I, I think that that can maybe highlight additional things that we need to be tracking, but I don't think that it tells us that there's anything that we're currently tracking that we shouldn't be looking at. Um, Tessa, would you agree? Yes, definitely. Uh, and I think we're seeing that as part of this review that we've been doing is um, realizing that there may be more detailed indicators or different types of inputs or outcomes that we want to include in the chapter um, that have been sort of brought to light from the questions that we've had coming out of, of the pandemic. Um, so yes, I think you, you said that perfectly, that we're trying to track trends as much as possible over time, um, but certainly can be, can be adding more instead of kind of editing those historic um, indicators. Question um, from Liz uh, Bullen, who, if I didn't pronounce your last name correctly, I apologize. Um, are you doing comparative analyses with other major cities in the U.S. or worldwide? Um, I think Tessa can speak more to this. I think this is, comes in more with the narrative. I will say that I have gotten questions about how a number in the MMR does compare to other cities, but I, I'll give that to Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, I think we do this, you know, kind of on an ad hoc basis. Uh, it's difficult. Um, uh, sometimes it's difficult to find our data, so it can be difficult to find other cities' data. Um, but to the extent that we can, we definitely are trying to keep on top of best practices in this type of work, looking at what other cities are doing, um, and understanding, you know, how their similar performance measures might also be trending. Uh, I think there's opportunity to do more of that. Absolutely. All right, and one more two-part question from Will Howard at NISM. Um, if the 2019 pre-pandemic baseline is, is to be retired, is there a consideration of making a new normal baseline based on more recent data? And have we seen enough stability in the data to be able to do so? That's a great question. Um, I will say that there is, there was historically and there continues to be a five-year trend uh, metric that is also similarly based on a linear model that is included in the MMR. So I think that that would count as a sort of new baseline exercise. Um, I, I don't know the stability of the indicators, like I haven't done an analysis on this. Uh, from what I've seen, I would say maybe yes, but I, I don't know that I would, uh, I, I wouldn't like swear on that. I haven't looked. All right. I'll just wrap up quickly and please continue to write questions in the chat if you have them. Uh, we'll also be providing our contact information um, at the end if you want to send either of us an email with additional questions. Um, all right. So I hope we got you a little bit excited about what MMR data is and how you can use it yourself or or just now monitor it for agencies that you work with um, or programs that you're interested in. And so what's next? Um, so we are continuing to streamline the MMR data sets data sets that are on the open data portal. So uh, the indicator data is just one of the data sets that we currently have on there. Um, but now with all these um, evolving products, we want to make sure that you are fine, you know, you're finding what it is that you need. Um, so we'll be working to, to streamline that and clean it up. And also evaluating opportunities for publishing other data sets that we do have in the report that are not uh, performance indicator based and also expanding the historic data availability. So I mentioned before, right now, the open data data set is from 2016 to the present. Um, and uh, mentioned earlier, someone had a great question uh, about how we come up with indicators. Uh, we are continuing our MMR review uh, project. Um, as part of this Executive Order 13. So we'll be working with all agencies to evaluate services, goals, indicators. Uh, we've done one group, and now we are just starting with our second group of, I think, 15 agencies. So we'll be doing that work this spring prior to publication of the MMR in September. 
And as part of this executive order and this review process, we're putting a, a renewed focus on customer experience. So many of the indicators that you see in the book today talk about operations, processes, administrative aspects of agency work, um, but they don't always capture how customers, New Yorkers, people receiving these services are uh, interacting with the agencies and, and the programs themselves. So we want to have more of that life cycle of how a customer is interacting with agencies, um, how they uh, uh, are receiving the services of the agencies. Um, and so we'll be working on that as part of our, our upcoming cycles. There are some customer service indicators in the book, um, but we view that um, as different than evaluating customer experience. So much more to come there. I know we're up on time. Yes. We do have two last questions in the chat. Can yeah. we answer them, Martha? Yes. Okay. Um, David Tussie asked, I hope, I said your name correctly. Um, is there a part of New York City government that is doing analysis of this data? How does, can you talk more, Tessa, about how uh, the data moves from information to action with agencies? Yeah, so um, we didn't touch on this, uh, kind of the internal work that we do around the MMR. So, of course, we're collecting all this agency data to issue the public report, and many different people uh, rely on that data. But internally, one of the um, renewed focus in this administration has been taking um, a more regular look at the MMR data and providing that information to the decision makers. So um, we are now uh, doing a different kind of report, um, I'll say, and we're providing that um, analysis to deputy mayor teams in particular. And the goal with these um, more periodic reports is that by the time we get to the MMR publication or the PMMR publication, we don't want any of the challenges or dips in performance to be a surprise to anybody in executive leadership. So if there's a particular issue with contracting or um, staffing issues or um, you know other kind of citywide challenges, we want executive leadership to know that this is happening so that they can be proactively thinking about how to address um, the resourcing issues or, or whatever it is that the agency needs. Um, so whereas in the past, perhaps, you know, it was kind of a issued report that we hope people read <laughs> twice a year. Um, it is now part of our portfolio of work on the performance management team to be more uh, proactive with agencies to make sure that they're submitting their periodic data on time, but then also packaging that in a very um, palatable way for decision makers to be able to actively monitor those things. Um, and part of that too, uh, going back to how we find indicators, is working with those decision makers to understand what it is that they really want to see. Uh, so is there a particular indicator, you know, that's an indication um, of uh, a very critical service that you know we know the deputy mayor teams need to see every month so that they can maintain performance um, or is there a critical piece of information that's missing and so that's what our team is able to do is make those adjustments based on what's needed um, but the dmmr i think and this new open data set uh, help move that needle as well because now this this periodic information is publicly available for the first time um, and so people like you can also do that analysis and keep us accountable. Yeah, and then just one more question that I'm going to quickly get to is, is Caitlin Del Deliso asked um, about the pandemic analysis, if the chart uh, includes indicators that don't have targets. And yes, when they, they don't, well, so a target is like a separate thing. Agencies will set targets for their indicators, um, which was not something that we really looked at with the pandemic analysis. We were sort of setting our own targets based on the pre-pandemic baseline. Um, uh, so, it, but, but it does include, uh, indicators that didn't have directions and, and if they were outside of that expected pre-pandemic range, we just considered them to be impacted, um, whether that impact was good or bad really depended on the indicator and, and sometimes, you know, was neither good or bad. It was just, oh, there was a big change here. 
Um, so yeah, we try and reserve value judgments on, on all of the work that we do. I think that there are lots of explanations for why we see the trends we do um that that really range so so it it's not a value judgment but the data does help us as a city like stay accountable to to the broader public so thank you guys so much you guys asked really great questions i i've really appreciated this session as much <laughs>